Right now, with international travel nearly impossible at the moment, migration into Australia is also set to take a big hit, as Acting Immigration Minister Alan Tudge recently told Insiders. Migration will be down 85% against what we had forecast previously. But do we even need migrants anyway? Can our economy do just as well with nothing but locally grown organic labour? Our economics expert, Luke McGregor, investigates. Hi, everyone. Right now, travelling between countries is problematic, but eventually, hopefully, everyone will start to open up their borders again. And I wanted to discuss what are the economic consequences of people who weren't born here choosing to make Australia their home. Also, some fun facts I learned whilst researching this. Around one in three people living in Australia are born overseas. And in 2016, almost half of the population had at least one parent born overseas. I also read that Sean Connery turned down the role of Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, but that is not related. OK, immigration. I know I'm going to argue with my relatives at Christmas about this, so let's dive in. First, let's hear from my drunk Uncle Luke. So, Luke, what are the economic impacts of immigration? I know a drunk uncle probably wouldn't raise a discussion of immigration like that, but I've cleaned it up for TV. Thank you for your question. A 2015 report found that an annual migrant intake of 190,000 would contribute $1.6 trillion to GDP by 2050. $1.6 trillion. You could fund Australia's entire health budget for about 20 years with that. You could fund our entire education system for over 40 years. And it's a terrible idea that you could buy 800 billion $2 shop wigs. I bought three, which is already too many. In fact, the report estimated that at those immigration levels, by 2050, each individual migrant would on average contribute 10% more to Australia's economy than existing residents. So what do you think of that, Uncle Luke? What, have they got a time machine? I don't care about the future, I care about now. I, I could make a trillion bucks if I wanted to. I just. I don't want to. OK, well, you may have heard Australia has an ageing population because people are living longer and not having as many babies. Virgin! I'm not actually. I've had sex. Prove it. Anyway, immigration can help counter the impact of our ageing population by adding more people of working age to Australia. Yeah, OK, so they're coming here and stealing our jobs. Hey, I understand that you're worried, but according to the data, you're wrong! A 2018 report published by the Australian Government, you may have heard of them, found that one, immigration leads to increased demands for goods and services, leading to job creation. Two, studies show that migrant labour has no adverse effects on Australian workers across regions and a range of skill levels. Three, even where immigrants don't participate in the labour force or have limited work rights, they still consume goods and services, so still add to job creation. Whatever. In fact, a study referenced by the government found almost no evidence that outcomes for those born in Australia have been harmed by immigration. Back to you, drunk Uncle Luke. Uh, OK, well, what about, what about people who don't speak English? I thought we were living in Australia. English was imported here. I mean... I'm just going to let the Australian government answer this one. The increased diversity that migrants bring is likely to play an important role in helping Australian businesses to innovate in the face of intensified global competition and technological change. Yeah, well, maybe you're reading your graphs upside down or something. I'm not. I know, I know all this sounds preachy. Yeah, back in your pulpit, preachy pants. But in terms of economic impact, people moving to Australia from any country across all skill levels benefits existing residents. So it's all sunshine and rainbows, is it? A bigger population, including through migration, can increase pressure on public infrastructure, housing and the environment. All issues we need to discuss solutions to. OK, but is letting people in from all over the world generally beneficial to the economy? The data says a big yes. Well, everyone's entitled to their, to their own opinion. Yes, but not everyone's opinion should matter because they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's a free country.